Hey guys, I'm actually really looking forward to taking up this one because I'm so happy to see the progress that some of you guys have made. Now, if you still found this difficult, don't worry, you are not on your own there. We've been through three very similar assessments now, and it has not been easy, but we kept at it, and we're starting to see the progress. So let's get into this. If this is your first time through this assessment on area, volumes of prisms, surface areas of prisms, rearranging formulas, and parts of a circle, Make sure you hit pause to work out your answers for yourself before we take it up at the end. If there are any topics in this assessment that you have not yet covered, have a look at the links down below before you see the answers and then come back when you're ready to test yourself. This first question is about the area of a trapezium. I hope you know that formula. This next one is about perimeter and area, again based on a trapezium. This one is about perimeter and area of a parallelogram another formula that you should know. This next one is the volume of a prism. In this case, a rectangular prism. Most people know that one. This next one is the surface area of a prism, more specifically, a rectangular prism. This is the volume and surface area, again, of a rectangular prism. This is the volume and surface area of a heart-shaped prism. So there may be other formulas that you need to use there. This is the volume of a triangular prism. And this last question is about the parts of a circle. So I hope you know these parts of a circle. All right, let's start taking this up. I hope you've had a chance to try that for yourself. Here come our answers. So for question one, work out the area of the shape I hope you know the formula for the area of a trapezium. We average the two parallel lengths, so a plus b divided by 2, and then we multiply the average length by the height, very similar to the area of a rectangle. So we're going to do 7 plus 13 divided by 2 to get the average of these lengths, and then I'm going to multiply that by the 4 the perpendicular height. Don't let that 11 fool you. That's not helpful at all for the area of a trapezium. So that's going to be 20 divided by 2 times 4, which is 10 times 4, which is 40 centimeters squared. Question 2. We are given the perimeter of this shape. And when you are given a value in a question, you should consider using the formula that would calculate that value. So we'll set up the formula. The perimeter is the sum of all the outer sides. So let's not get confused by this 4. This time it's not one of the outer sides. That's the 8 plus the 12 plus the 14 plus the base, which we're not told. But we are told that that's supposed to add up to 52. So we've got an equation now where the only value we don't know is the base. So we can rearrange this equation to get the base by itself to see what its value is. So 8 plus 12 plus 14, that simplifies to be 34 plus the base should make 52. So the base on its own, I'll move the 34 to the other side, so take it away, and that's going to be 52 minus 34, 18 centimeters. So my base is 18 centimeters. It's always very helpful with multi-part questions to label the diagram once you've found a value. So that's 18. Now to work out the area of this shape, that 18 is going to come in very handy because we remember the area formula for a trapezium. We want to find the average of two parallel lengths, so a plus b divided by 2, multiplied again by the height, not the 14 and not the 8, so that's where we need to use the 4. So that's going to be 12 plus 18 divided by 2 times 4, which is 30 divided by 2 times 4, which is 15 times 4, which is 60 centimeters squared. Next, we're asked to find the base length of the shape given the area. So I hope you know the formula. Remember, when we are given a value in a question, we should consider using the formula that would calculate that value. So the, set up the formula, the area of a parallelogram, much like the area of a rectangle, is length times width, except we call it the base and we call this the height. And they must be at perpendiculars to each other. So again, don't get confused by the 9 centimeters. It's not going to help us. So base times height, we're told the area is 60, so that should equal 60. 
And although I don't know what my base is, I do know what my height is. So I substitute that value in. Base times 5 should equal 60. So that base, getting that base on its own, I'll move the 5 to the other side. Right now it's multiplying the opposite of multiplying. We'll divide it. So we've got 60 divided by 5, which is 12. Our base is 12 centimeters. Again, I'll label that on my diagram because I'm sure that that is going to help me with the next part of my question. We're then asked to work out the perimeter of the shape. And the perimeter, as we've just said, is the sum of all of the outer sides. As this is a parallelogram, we can see by the markings, we know that the two opposite sides are equal. So the perimeter is going to be 12 plus 9 plus 12 plus 9, which gives us 42 centimeters. Perimeter is 42 centimeters. Question 4. We're working out this time the width of this prism, given that the volume is 252 centimeters cubed. Remember what we said. If you're given a value in the question, you should set out the formula that you would generally use to calculate that value. So the volume of a prism. Set up the formula. A lot of you use the formula length times width times height, the volume of a cuboid or rectangular prism. But I like you to also recognize that it's the same thing as the area of the cross section multiplied by the length of the prism. Because although this first formula will work for rectangular prisms, this second formula will work for any type of prism. So let's have a look at this then. The area of the cross section. I need to choose which size of these I'm going to call the cross section face. And I'm thinking I'm going to use this one. Because, right, this next question is about the volume of a prism, where you're actually given the volume of the prism and you're trying to work out its width. So as we said before, if you're given a value in the question, you should start by setting out the formula that you would generally use to calculate that value. Now this is the formula that I think most of you generally use. Length times width times height. That does work for a rectangular prism, but I've been trying to convince you to use this formula because this formula works for any type of prism. Note that for a rectangular prism, the area of the cross section, if I label this as my cross section here, it's a rectangle. And the area of a rectangle is length times width. And then I'm just going to multiply that cross section by the length of the prism. The length of the prism doesn't need to be called the height or the length or the width. It just has to be the distance between the cross section and the opposite face cross section. So the distance between this yellow rectangle and the identical rectangular face that would be on the other side of this rectangular prism. Okay, so in this case, if I'm calling this yellow rectangle my cross section, the area of that would be 7 times 9. This dimension multiplied by its perpendicular dimension. See, I'm not caught up in calling that length times width. Here it's length times height. And the length of the prism. I'm not worried that it's not going to be this 9, which I've got leveled with an L here. It's the distance from this yellow rectangular cross-section face to the identical cross-section face at the other end of this prism. And that's going to be the W. That's going to be what we're looking for. Now, if we're told this volume is 252, 252 is equal to the area of the cross-section times by the length of the prism or if you prefer, length times height times width. And we'll simplify that to find out what width is on its own. 7 times 9 is 63. And to get the W on its own, that's being multiplied, so we will divide. So the W must be equal to 4 centimeters. We've got our width, 4 centimeters. This time we're given a very similar looking shape. We've got another rectangular prism. And even the measurements I've given you are the same. However, I've given you some different information here. I'm telling you the surface area is 286 centimeters squared. And I am not promising you that this is the same shape as the previous one. So let's start by setting that up. If you are given the surface area, remember we must set out the formula that we would generally use to calculate the surface area. And I'd like you to use this formula because this is the formula that will work for any type of prism. 
Let me explain it to you again. Define the surface area that is sum, that is the sum of the areas of all of the faces of the prism. We will have two cross section areas. That is two of these rectangular faces that I've shaded here in yellow. Let me show you the net. There's one in the front and there's one in the back. And then we are going to do one other big rectangle here, which consists of the measurements where one of the side lengths is the perimeter of this cross section, that is the sum of all of these sides, and the other length of this rectangle will be equal to the length of the prism, which is the distance between this cross section area and the identical cross section face on the other side. In this example, the length of the prism again is labeled W, so width. Let me show you that on our diagram up here of our net. So this is the top face, this is the right side face, this will be the bottom face, which you can't see right now, and this will be the left side face. So you've got the front, the back, top, right, bottom, and left. That's all the faces of the rectangular prism. And to find its surface area, I've got two of these yellow rectangles, and I've got one big blue rectangle where this full length here is the sum of the sides of the cross-section face. This length here will be equal to the nine. This length here, which we'll join over here as well, will be equal to the h. This length here, again, will be the nine. And this length here, again, will be the seven, which is the h. Now the distance between your two cross-section faces is the same on your net as it is in this cuboid diagram. It will be the W. Okay, so let's substitute some values into here then. We know the surface area is 286. The area of the cross-section will be the product of these two lengths. The perimeter of the cross-section will be the sum of 9 plus 7 plus 9 plus 7. And the length of the prism, as we said before, the distance between the cross-section faces is w. Right, simplifying that, we know that 7 times 9 is 63. And we know that 9 plus 7 plus 9 plus 7 is 32. So 286 is equal to 2 times the area of this yellow rectangle, because there are two of them, plus 32 times w, because this all together adds up to 32. Multiply that by the W, and that will give you the area of this big blue rectangle we've made. So simplifying that, 2 times 63 is 126 plus the 32W. To get the W on its own, first we'll move the 126, which is being added. So when we take it to the other side, we will subtract 286 minus 126, leaves us with 32W. That's 160 is equal to 32W. And now to split the w from the 32, they're being multiplied together. So we'll take the 32 across and divide, which gives us 5 centimeters. The width of this rectangular prism is 5 centimeters, or the way we've been calling it up here, the length of the prism, the distance between the two cross-section faces. Next, we're looking at the volume and surface area of a rectangular prism again. This one's a bit easier because you're given the length, the width, and the height. You can just go ahead and substitute that into the formula. So for the volume, we can either do length times width times height, or as I'm trying to get you guys to recognize, we're going to do the area of the cross section multiplied by the length of the prism. Now, in order to do this in a way that we're not going to argue about, let me call the cross section face this one up here, where this is the length, it's 15, and this is the width, it's two. So the volume of this rectangular prism is this area, length times width, multiplied by the length of the prism, which is the distance from this cross-sectional face to the opposite identical cross-sectional face, which will be at the bottom of the shape, the distance away, will be equal to h, the height. So no arguments here to find the volume of this shape. We're going to do length, which is 15, times width, which is 2, times height, 
my length of the prism, which is 3. So that's going to give me 90 centimeters cubed. So that's my volume. To work at the surface area of this prism, again, I'm going to use the formula from before, which assumes that I've got two cross-sectional faces. That's the one that we've got shaded in blue at the top, plus another one at the bottom. And I'm going to make a big yellow rectangle this time, which involves the four other faces. This one, which I see here in the front, this one that I've got on the side here, which has got a width of two and a height of three. The one I've got in the back, which is identical to the one I've got in the front, which is a length of 15 and a height of three. And the last one, which I've got over here hidden on the left hand side, which will have a width of two and a height of three. So the perimeter of the cross section, which is 15 plus two plus 15 plus two, is the length of this full yellow rectangle. And the width of it is simply the distance between the two cross-sectional faces. That's the three, the height. So substitute that into our formula here. Two times the area of the cross-section, two times the 15 times two, 15 times two, is going to be my two cross-section faces, plus the perimeter of the cross-section, which is 15, plus 2, plus 15, plus 2, multiplied by the height of the prism, the distance between the two cross-section faces. This is 15, 2, 15, 2, and that is 3. Simplifying that, I've got 2 times 30, because 15 times 2 is 30, plus the perimeter of this cross-section, or simply the length of this yellow rectangle, is 34, times by the width of that yellow rectangle, the same as this height here, three. That gives us 60 plus 102, which is 162 centimeters squared. Next, we've got a heart-shaped prism. And this is why I've been really, really drilling into you the better way to set out your formulas for the volume and the surface area. Because so long as you have the area of the cross section and the length of the prism, you can find your volume. And so long as you have the area of the cross section and the perimeter of the cross section and the length of the prism, you can find your surface area. In this question, I'm not asking you to work out the area of this heart shape. You are told the area of the heart shape. It's 15 centimeters squared. And I don't need you to do a whole bunch of fancy calculating or work out its perimeter. You are told that the perimeter is 15 centimeters. And the length of the prism shape is seven centimeters. So from the cross section at the front to the cross section at the back is seven centimeters. Let's set out the formula for the volume. Very simple, the volume of any prism is the area of the cross section multiplied by the length of the prism. If you consider you found the area of this heart is 15 centimeters squared, but you fill this prism up all the way through to the back, so you're repeating that 15 centimeters repeatedly for seven centimeters in length, the shape will fill up with a volume of 15 times seven, which is 105 centimeters cubed. Next, the surface area. Again, the surface area of any prism, we have to assume that there are at least two faces which are identical, and in this case, they are the cross-sectional heart-shaped faces. So if I want to find the surface area of this prism, I'll do two times the area of the heart-shaped face, plus, doesn't look like it now, but if I drew a net of this and rolled it out, you would see I've got my two heart-shaped ends, and the rest would roll out flat to make a rectangle. The length of this rectangle has to wrap around the heart-shaped faces on either end. So that's why that's the perimeter of the cross-section. And the length of this prism is equal to the width of this rectangle that we've rolled out. So our surface area is going to be 2 times the area of the cross section, which is 2 times 15, plus the perimeter of the cross section, which we're given as being 15, that's this length here, multiplied by the length of the prism, which we're told this here is 7 centimeters. So that's going to be 30 plus 105, which is 135 centimeters squared. Next, the volume of another prism. 
Now, this is not a heart-shaped prism, nor is it a rectangular prism. It's a triangular prism, but the theory is all the same. First, let's start with what we're given here. We are told that the area of this cross-section face is 14 centimeters squared. We are told that the triangle cross-section face has a height of 7 centimeters, an area of 14 centimeters squared, but we need to work out the base. As we've said before, in a question when you're given a value, we need to start by setting out the formula that we would generally use to find that value. So the formula for the area of a triangle, let's set that out. The area of a triangle is base times height divided by 2. So in this case, if we are told that the area of the triangle is 14, and we're told that the height is 7, we can work out the base. We set up the equation now, so substituting into the formula and rearrange it to find what base is on its own. Base is being multiplied by 7 and divided by 2. So the first thing I'll get rid of is the 2, opposite of divide. I will multiply. Now, simplifying that, 14 times 2 is 28. And I want to get the base on its own. Base is being multiplied by 7, so the opposite of that is divide. And the base must be equal to 28 divided by 7 is 4 centimeters. So I've got my base at 4 centimeters. My volume, well, I just need to know the length of the prism and the area of the cross section. I am told the area of the cross section, the area of that triangle, is 14 centimeters squared. So the volume of my prism is going to be 14 times the length of the prism, 14 times 9, which we're given here. 14 times 9, that's 126. No messy business. There's our volume, 126 centimeters cubed. Last question here, parts of a circle. Now, I hope you know this vocabulary. We're just filling in the blanks here. The line OC, so from the point out, out to C, from the center out to the edge of a circle, that's called a radius. The curved part of the circle between B and C, so part of the way around the full circle, that's just called an arc. C, given that O is the center of the circle, and the line passes through O between points A and D. That would be called, going through the center, all the way across to the other side of a circle, that would be called a diameter. D, the full curved line around the circle, that is the perimeter of the circle, that's called the circumference. E, if you draw a line from the point D to the point C, this line would be called A from D to C. That wasn't drawn on there for us. That would be called a chord. It's not going through the center of the circle. It just goes from one point on the circumference to another. That's a chord. And the plural word for radius, I hope you know this. We often misuse it. It's called radii. Two radii. I hope you found this assessment helpful. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more practice tests like this. And if you're still struggling, please leave me a comment. Maybe I can help you. And please really do check out the links to the lessons that I've listed down in the comment section. We have been practicing at this a lot and it shows. Can I give a shout out to my class? I don't want to call you out by name because I don't want to embarrass you, but my beach girl or my Saturday buddy or my name twin. I am so proud of you guys. Keep it up.